Hey there, my friend. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi from the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project, and I want to welcome you to today's video where we're going to be getting into part two of our series on the most important hormones that affect your ability to lose weight and build muscle. And in part one, we talked about cortisol. And if you haven't watched that, I recommend you do. There's gonna be some links in the comments in the description as well. So you can get a primer on that because in part two today, we're gonna to be talking about insulin, which is again, one of the most important hormones for our overall health and probably one of the most important hormones we need to talk about in today's day and age. Because in today's day and age, we live in a place and a time where it's so easy to eat unhealthy foods, foods that are very high in processed sugars, foods that are high in bad types of fats, foods that are loaded with calories. And insulin is the hormone that gets directly affected from this stuff. Because what insulin is, is our body's storage hormone. We need insulin to survive, just like we need cortisol to be activated and have energy, we need insulin to process the foods. Anytime we eat food, particularly carbohydrates and some proteins, our body senses those nutrients are coming in and releases insulin from this organ that sits right here in our abdominal cavity called the pancreas. The pancreas secretes insulin. And insulin's job is to take all that blood sugar that gets uh, into the bloodstream after we've done digestion and to shuttle it into cells. All those cells, pretty much all cells on your body have an insulin receptor. It's like a little, little receptor that insulin binds to and docks to. When insulin binds to that receptor, it actually opens up these channels for glucose and amino acids to come into the cell. So insulin says, okay, we have nutrients present in the body. Let's get those shuttled into the cells. You need this to work. But while your body's secreting insulin to kind of get all the stuff into the cells, it actually basically shuts down a lot of the metabolic machinery for fat burning because your body's in storage mode. It's like we have an influx of stuff coming in right now, so let's store, we don't need to burn fat. When insulin levels lower after a little bit, you've had your meal, you're not eating anymore, digestion has happened, then your body gets back to regular resting metabolism where it's burning a lot of different fatty acids at rest and insulin is not blunting fat burning. So the first key thing is you would not be here today if it weren't for the beautiful actions of insulin that allows you to store stuff. The problem is, is when we have chronically elevated insulin, meaning we're eating snack foods all the time, we're eating a lot of carbohydrates and processed sugars, we're stressed out and cortisol levels are constantly high, which, which actually can lead to some insulin resistance. So what happens when this whole picture breaks down and how is insulin operating in most people's bodies today? Well, when we're eating a bad kind of diet, let's just say a lot of crap foods, insulin's constantly being stimulated, which means the pancreas has to do a lot of work. It has to constantly kick out insulin to deal with all this sugar. And over time, when insulin's floating around a lot, our fat burning is blunted and the cells actually become resistant to insulin. This is insulin resistance. This is the pathway to type two diabetes. This is basically almost like that pre-diabetic thing. We're chewing so much taxation with these crappy foods. Insulin's working really hard and the cells become resistant to them. And when the cells become resistant to insulin, they're not actually getting nutrition into the cells. So the pancreas actually has to kick off more insulin to try to get this scenario to happen. So what normally would have taken you, let's just say five, 10 units of insulin, just for the sake of numbers and argument, might take someone who's insulin resistant three, four, five times the production. So you have so much insulin and then the body gets tired over time. And we have chronically elevated fasting insulin, which is crushing your fat burning abilities. And it's also leading to more weight gain. And eventually that can become full blown type two diabetes. I wanna talk about a, a little bit of an important medical term right now that's relevant to almost all of us today, and that's the idea of metabolic syndrome. This is basically like the medical term for you have a jacked up broken metabolism, and it's defined and evidenced by four key things. Uh, the first factor for men and women is that you have a high waist circumference. So for men, it's above 40 inches around your belly button. For women, it's above 35. So if you have a high waist circumference, this is one factor, um, basically you're overweight, this is one factor towards metabolic syndrome. The second factor is you have triglycerides, these fats that we measure in blood work. Triglycerides are above 150. If you do blood work and those are above 150 and you have a high waist, this is really predictive that you have some degree of insulin resistance. The other factor is you have elevated blood sugar, so or blood pressure, I should say. So let's say above 130 over 85 on a, on a blood pressure test, that elevated blood pressure is another factor of metabolic syndrome. And finally, you have low levels of HDL, which is often referred to as the good cholesterol. In women, that means it's lower than 50. In men, it's less than 40. So this is really the thing that you see with most unhealthy people. If we took like 5, 10 people who have unhealthy bodies off the street, we took their blood work, we measured their waist circumference, we looked at their triglycerides and their blood pressure, many people have metabolic syndrome. 
And metabolic syndrome is effectively a condition that is completely associated with insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is associated with weight gain, cognitive decline, decreases in muscle mass, and this is a really, really bad scenario. So the question is, how do we actually have insulin work properly for us? Well, the first thing is if you are unhealthy right now, one of the things we need to do is restore insulin sensitivity. And the way we restore insulin sensitivity is lowering the carbohydrate burden. This is why so many people do really well on lower carbohydrate diets because when you're not using carbs, which stimulate insulin, your body has a chance to get more sensitized. The pancreas has a chance to rest and relax. And when you start eating different foods that are not processed sugary foods and you're having foods that are more nutrient dense, have lots of good proteins and healthy fats, those things tend to keep you full longer. So number one, reducing your carbohydrates. Inside our Fit Father and Fit Mother programs, we are not believers in a no carbohydrate, super ketogenic diet. We believe you can have carbohydrates in there in a sustainable plan, just lower levels. So you're not eating as much carbohydrates. Maybe you only have a cup of cooked carbohydrates at dinner, which is around 40, 50 grams. If you're keeping your carbohydrates typically uh, below 100 to 150 grams, maybe even below 100 if you're trying to get healthy for the day, that is a moderate carbohydrate diet. That might be 25 to 30% of your calories. You can still enjoy carbohydrate foods you love, but you're still getting benefits of restoring insulin sensitivity. And there's actually some fruits that actually do help restore insulin sensitivity because they have certain minerals in them too. So to restore insulin sensitivity, lower carbohydrates, but not necessarily no carbohydrate. Because if you do no carbohydrates for a long period of time, that can, act, that can actually create insulin resistance because the body doesn't need to use insulin uh, in the metabolic pathway when there's no carbohydrates. So that's a little more nuanced. We'll kind of pause there. The second way you can actually improve your insulin sensitivity is to improve your sleep. So insulin is a circadian hormone in, in the fact that we're typically eating during the daytime hours. So when you can actually sleep better, um, effectively it makes your body more insulin sensitive. And on the converse, if you have bad sleep, you become insulin resistant, which kicks into this whole bad cascade towards metabolic syndrome stuff we don't want. So optimizing your sleep is gonna optimize both insulin and cortisol levels like we talked about, that's really great. The third way to improve insulin sensitivity is to exercise, particularly strength training exercise. These muscles, when we act Activate them through the right kinds of exercises that we have hundreds of videos on our channel talking about, they become like sponges. After exercise, the muscles actually overexpress these glucose and insulin receptors because they're like, we are hungry. We just worked. Let's get all these good nutrients via insulin into the cells so we can actually do strength training exercise a few times per week and dramatically improve your insulin sensitivity. I think daily walking helps a lot as well. And there's certain compounds like green tea that's actually insulin sensitizing. So we want to be insulin sensitive. We do not want to be insulin resistant. And in the process of getting our bodies healthier, releasing weight, starting to build muscle, we will become more insulin sensitive. And here's the beautiful thing. When you're insulin sensitive, you can enjoy carbohydrates. Because what happens is when you eat carbohydrates, like let's say I ate four bananas, a lot of carbohydrates, it's like 80, 90 grams of carbs. What my body will do because I'm insulin resistant is blood sugar will temporarily raise over the course of 30, 45 minutes. Insulin will act and clear everything out. And then my blood sugar will go back down to stable levels. That is good insulin action. Yes, I had blunted fat burning for that 45 minutes that the insulin was rise, but I also got a lot of these great foods into my body for energy and recovery. And the reason I can get away with eating carbohydrates, and many of our members can, is because they become more insulin sen sensitive over time. So insulin sensitivity is the goal. And you can actually test this on a blood test. You can go to your doctor and you can ask for an oral glucose tolerance test with fasting insulin. And that's if you wanna go down and get that stuff tested with your doctor, that's great. But there's also some simple ways to predict insulin resistance, which is this table right here. There's some really good data that shows that effectively, if you do a correlation um, or a ratio, I should say, between your hip and your waist circumference, and you do the ratio of that and look at yourself on this table right here, that's effectively gonna show you how predictive you are for insulin resistance. And the story is, you have a large belly and there's a large belly and low, smaller hips that typically comes along with insulin resistance. We wanna work on restoring that. Let's switch gears a little bit because you definitely want insulin and there's great benefits to insulin, particularly if you're looking to build muscle. Insulin is an anabolic building up hormone and insulin directly stimulates muscle building. The downstream cascade of muscle building after exercise is stimulated by insulin. Insulin leads to insulin-like growth factor one. It actually turns on this thing called mTOR, which increases protein synthesis. Without getting into the science, I personally believe it is a very good idea to get some carbohydrates after you exercise to stimulate that insulin because it kicks off protein synthesis. It brings the body into an anabolic building up mode. So good times to consume carbohydrates are certainly after exercise, maybe before, but you can absolutely work 
workout fasted in the morning if that's how you roll as well. But carbohydrates, particularly some fruits after exercise alongside some proteins, is a really great thing. Or if you have a dinner after you exercise, you exercise later in the day, and you have a dinner with some proteins and carbohydrates, you're gonna get some nice insulin action. Now another unique thing is insulin is actually um, anti-catabolic, which means it prevents the breakdown of muscle tissue. And this is something that's very important to people who are into bodybuilding and really maintaining their physique, because as you try to lose fat after some time, it's a catabolic process on both your muscle tissue and your fat tissue, and insulin can actually help buffer that out. Believe it or not, there are competitive bodybuilders, some of the people you've probably seen photos of that are at the top level, they actually take insulin. They inject insulin, and what the research actually shows is if you inject super physiologic levels of insulin, like very high, maybe five times what a diabetic would do to maintain blood sugars, insulin actually promotes the building up of muscles. It's very anabolic. Now this is an absolutely dangerous thing to do because insulin's gonna lower your blood sugar tremendously. That could lead to hypoglycemia in a severe way, and if that gets too bad, you can actually go into shock, a coma, and you can die. But bodybuilders do this because they're trying to maximize everything possible. So I just wanted to show you in this, this kind of extreme example that insulin has uses for building up the body. And my personal take is let insulin just do its thing by having carbohydrates at certain times of the day, particularly after exercise, and don't be afraid of having a cup of carbs with your dinner to enjoy some rice or sweet potatoes alongside of any kind of protein that you have in your dinner. The last thing I wanna say is one thing to really optimize insulin is to use some intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is the practice of basically periodically not eating food. You can do this every single day by either eating dinner really early in the night, maybe 5, 6 p.m. and fasting until breakfast the next day. You can also skip your first meal and kind of shift that back to 10, 30, 11, noon. That period where you're not eating, insulin levels are low. And when you're fasting, insulin levels are lower. They're not being stimulated, so that increases insulin sensitivity. But also doing periodic longer fasts, maybe a 24, a 48, maybe even a 72-hour fast, could be a health tip and a habit for you to give a little boost to improving your insulin sensitivity. What I personally do is a few times per year, I will do a three-day water fast. Nothing but water, three days, I don't overexert my body, and it's not easy to do this, but there are a lot of benefits. Certainly a benefit to insulin sensitivity, certainly a benefit to breaking down denatured proteins, and it actually helps take out some of the cellular garbage. And when insulin levels are low, meaning you're low fasting insulin when you're fasting, growth hormone levels rise. Growth hormone and insulin are on this kind of seesaw relationship. When insulin's low, growth hormone is high. Growth hormone breaks down fat, it is lipolytic, it helps reju rejuvenate and restore tissues, and I think the best way is not necessarily to go on a low-carb, no-carb diet, but to be metabolically flexible, to enjoy a balanced amount of carbohydrates at the right times. We'll show you exactly how to do that inside our Fit Father and Fit Mother programs, whether you get our free meal plan or our full programs. We basically have a diet that I believe is optimized for being sustainable, enjoyable, improving insulin sensitivity while still allowing you to eat the right kinds of carbohydrates at the right times, and also teaching you things like how to use periodic fasting to improve your health overall. So the answer here is that insulin is not some scary thing you should avoid at all costs. You just want it working properly in your diet today. And today it's really hard to do that, right? With all the processed convenience foods. That's why it's more important than ever for your health, your future, and your longevity to understand insulin and understand how the foods you eat, your sleep, and your movement do impacts this massive hormone that's gonna really predict the future of your health. Look, 50% of people overweight metabolic syndrome, maybe even more today, this is a massive problem. So if you can share this information with somebody, start being positive changes in your life, we can all get better together. Insulin is misunderstood, absolutely key and essential, and I hope you found this video valuable. So if you missed part one, you can go back and check out cortisol. In part three, we're gonna talk about thyroid hormone, this metabolic hormone that increases your metabolism produced by this little thyroid butter-shaped gland, butterfly-shaped gland that's right here in the neck. We're gonna get into that in part three, so if you're interested in learning more about thyroid, how it affects muscle building and weight loss, we're gonna cover that in a future video. Hope you found this valuable, my friend. If you want some help in basically condensing down some of this information that can seem like theory and making it very practical on a plan that you can actually sustain, go forward into the description in the comments, check out our programs. These things can truly change your life. Thank you for being here, my friend. I'll talk to you soon, and I'll see you in part three of this video series on the key hormones for health, weight loss, and muscle building. Hey there, my friend. It's Dr. A. Thanks for checking out today's video. I hope you found it valuable. Here at the Fit Father Project, my team and I are on a mission to help busy guys, particularly men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, lose weight, build muscle, and get healthy for themselves and their families. So I'm super grateful you're here. When you subscribe to our Fit Father Project YouTube channel, you're gonna get instant access to over 500 different videos that cover nutrition, workouts for fat loss and muscle building, mindset supplementation, all the important things you wanna know about. So I wanna invite you to subscribe. You get notified when we publish new videos every single week. 
Also, if you want some direct help with your health and fitness, I invite you to scroll below in the description and click on the links for our free meal plans and free workouts. We have versions for both fat loss and muscle building. We'll send them straight to your email. And we'll be able to help you see really amazing results this week. And of course, you can also visit our website, fitfatherproject.com. There's gonna be forums where you can actually get in contact with me and my team. Tell us about what's going on with your health and fitness. We'll be happy to serve you. Thanks for being here, my friend. I'll see you around the channel. And I'll talk to you very soon.